In this video I would like to talk with you about virtue and sin. In the previous video you could already hear that morality is basically more about which tribe or which group you belong to. And virtue and sin are not so much about group identity. It is more about how to um, progress religiously. And religion, I use here in the term of uh, re-ligare, reconnect, so to enhance your connection with higher powers. And every uh, religion or path or deity has its own set of virtues and sins. Because what is the defining value of a virtue or a sin? A virtue is something which brings you closer to that deity or that higher power, while a sin is something which blocks your contact with that deity or a higher power. So you cannot in absolute terms talk about virtue and sin. You can talk about virtue and sin regarding a specific path to a specific deity. Because with certain deities there are even several paths you can follow to yeah, develop religiously um, a better connection with that deity. To understand the concept of virtue and sin a little bit better, um, I always use the, the, the symbolism in a little bit of traveling a road. And you are at a certain place and the deity is at a certain different place. And over time you are attempting to get closer and closer and in a way as you get closer in the beginning when something is very far it is very faint you can almost not see the light and as you come closer it, the presence of that light becomes more and more intense and in the end just as you are approaching the sun you're in a way absorbed into that light and your own light becomes in a way outshone by the shine by the shine of the deity this is the process of religion and that your light becomes closer to the divine light and as it does so the divine light becomes more clear and you start in a way to be less blinded by your own light. When we talk about a virtue it is about that divine light which exists outside of us but also inside of us. And it is like two magnets. If we develop our inner light, we feel more attracted and we get more connection and more receptiveness to that source of light. So by developing a certain quality, certain goodness, which the deity stands for, we feel more attracted to it, we are more attracted to it. And by working with it, by growing it, we get more close to that divine source. A sin is the opposite. It is something which obscures the light of the divine so that we are left with our own personal light. So the process of working with virtue and sin is a process of blinding ourselves to the divine light and seeing only our own light if we are sinful or the opposite focusing on the divine light and seeing the divine light within us rather than our own personal light if we are virtuous. So it is very much a part, a path of selfishness, of learning how to follow the guidance of the higher power. So if we are talking about um, virtues and sins, there are certain things which most religions have in common. One thing they have in common is truthfulness. Because ultimately, if we are not true to ourselves, if we are lying to ourselves or lying to others, ultimately we lose sight of reality and we go into all kinds of fantasies. We start living in a fantasy world and we start condemning other people to a fantasy world. And it is like 
being lost in a fog. You don't know which direction you're going. And slowly but surely you drift away from where you are going. We're just going in circles. This is why truthfulness is a virtue in many, many different religions. Another one which is very related to it is justice. That we, in a way, have a sense of what is the will of the God, what is right according to the view of the God, and what is wrong. And that things happen appropriately to the will of the God. And this is the essence of justice. If we act in a just way, we do what in a way the God would want us to do. If we act in an unjust way, we are going against the wishes of that deity. So it's important to see that in as a sin or a virtue, justice is not about yeah, laws or morality. It's about following the guidance of the deity. And by doing, acting like the deity would act or would have us act, we become more similar to that deity with every action. Because we're building patterns, we're building habits. So we're building the habit of being like a god. And by having this habit, we come closer to their station, to their understanding, to their light, to their power. So the path of virtue is in a way a path of religion, a path of becoming more similar to a deity, while a path of sin is ultimately becoming more uh, like we are. So sinfulness is not by definition a descent, and or that we are degrading ourselves, but we are in a way blinding ourselves to the guidance from God. And this is why often very strong emotions, uh, whether it is lust or greed or fear, um, are seen as sins. Because ultimately, these are things which are arising from ourselves. And they can be so strong, so overpowering, that we are unable to see what the higher powers would want of us, what they would have us see or do or think or feel. By being overpowered by these impulses coming from within, we lose our religion, we lose our ability to reconnect with the divine, our true guide. So we start not even guiding ourselves, but being guided by these lower impulses, by these lower spirits also sometimes, which feed and stimulate these lower impulses like fear or anger or greed within ourselves. There are parts within society and definitely parts within ourselves and most especially in our egos which feed that sinful behavior because the ego wants to maintain itself, wants to have safety, security within the body and also uh, we like to have a position within society. We like to have a home and food and clothes to wear and money in the bank and all these things. It gives us a feeling of safety, of relaxation. And these driving forces are okay. They have a place in our lives. I need clothes, otherwise I will freeze. I need food, otherwise I will starve. I need shelter, otherwise I will get sick. So it is not wrong to have fear. It is not wrong to feel greed, but we have to realize what the effects are of these feelings. And the effect of these feelings is that I lose my connection, that I'm hindered in my ability to connect to higher powers. So they have a place and they have a purpose. And their place and their purpose is that they are to sustain my body. And by sustaining my body, I have a body which I can use for religious purposes, to grow, to experience, and to act out the will of these higher powers in the world towards others. But in a way for them to be a help rather than a blockage, they need to be subservient. 
So the sin must never obscure the virtue. The virtue must be strong enough, but also not blind. If I reject sin to such a degree it will kill myself, it is not a virtue because my past will have ended, my ability to act, to grow, will have ended. So if I would not eat, would not close myself, would not work for a living, that is not a virtue, if I would only sit and pray. We need to find an optimal balance between what our bodies demand of us and what we can offer to the deity and ourselves, our own spirits, to develop themselves. And in different circumstances the balance is going to be different. If I would have a very easy job, uh, where I would make a lot of money with little effort, um, then I would have a lot of time available for my spiritual development, to act on my virtues. If, for instance, I'm in a position where I have to work day shifts, night shifts, and I'm completely exhausted. There's very little opportunity for my religion. But we are ultimately also not judged by how much opportunity we have. And to have a lot of opportunity is a blessing, and to have very little opportunity is a curse. But how we deal with them ultimately decides our station in relationship to that higher power. So if I have all this wealth and luxury and I don't have to work and I do not do anything religious, I do not anything to develop myself or to act virtuously towards other beings, then obviously I'm not worth the blessing. I just waste the opportunities I'm given and the deity will not be appreciative of me because I'm basically from its perspective a wastrel, a person who squanders his opportunities and therefore I'm not very deserving of help or aid on my path because I'm not making progress or as much progress as I could easily do on that path. Well, if I'm a person who's living in very difficult circumstances but using every opportunity I have, even while at work, to chant, to pray, uh, to do short meditations or to act out in the most virtuous manner I can towards the others in my job, then that God or Goddess will believe this is a person who seizes every opportunity they have to come closer to me, who sees really the value of what I have to offer and sees the value of their path and they will be very inclined to support me, to bless me, to guide me. And ultimately, if you would average things out over many, many lifetimes, things would gravitate towards that, that people yeah, who have uh, served higher powers well will yeah, reserve more support from those higher powers and also will karmatically be given more opportunities to work with their virtues while people who in a way waste their opportunities who are acting in sinful manners being absorbed by themselves rather than seizing the opportunity to act in a virtuous manner will ultimately drift away from the deity and become more and more self-absorbed and receive less and less guidance from these higher powers. And here it is very important to see the difference between being blessed by higher powers and the benefits of being a selfish person. Blessings by higher powers are very very valuable because they allow us to see beyond our own horizon, um, to see the light of the tunnel, to see the solution to our 
predicament to find ways to get out of paradoxical problems which have us paralyzed. So this is the power of blessings. That you are a blessed person basically means that you're never at a standstill, that you're continuously growing and developing yourself and gaining more insight, gaining more wisdom, um, gaining more discipline. If we look at the benefits of being selfish, it is that you're better at, comp at competing with others because you're no longer, in a way, distracted by acting in a virtuous manner or developing yourself. You just try to find the uh, most efficient solution to better your own position. So it is not always true that the virtuous person will have the highest position in society. It is often the most sinful person who will get the highest position within society. And unfortunately, even within religion, there is a reward for sin. People who are good at politics, who are good at making friends, who are good at manipulating others, they will also rise higher in hierarchies or gain more power or gain more wealth. Because this is what they are trying to achieve. This is their goal. And this is what they work towards. And they will gather that onto themselves. And just like the virtuous person, they will gather the support and the blessings of higher beings onto themselves. So both of them are gathering, in a way, riches. But the riches of the sinful person tend to be in the form of the things which the self craves. They will have nice clothes, they will have a nice house, they will have money in the bank, um, they will have a position, they will have respect. Um, within their world, which is the world of the ego. Well, the virtuous person will also build up riches and their riches will be their spirit friends, um, the insights they have, the wisdom, their experience, their discipline, their toughness, their resilience. And most importantly, the karmatic patterns which they create, which will last many, many lifetimes. So these same patterns of virtuous behavior will prevent you from missteps in your next incarnation. And the same patterns of sinful behavior will guide you further along the path of the ego in your next incarnation. So if you have, in a way, the, the consciousness and the good fortune, maybe, to um, realize this, how in a way um, sin has its wages and virtue has its wages and you can look at your own situation what is it that you need right now do you need the wages of sin to provide opportunity for you to develop your virtue or do you need to let go of your sinfulness to develop your virtue because ultimately the wages of sin can also be taken into your next incarnation and you will have a better capability of being selfish, of being attaining position, of attaining wealth in your next incarnation. So it is not right to say like, ah, but all the wealth will just disappear at the end of your life. Yes, but also this pattern of attainment will also serve you in your next life. But if you look in it in an even bigger scale, incarnation after incarnation after incarnation. The persons who follow the path of sin, their consciousness will stay on the same level and they may be the richest person on the planet, the most powerful person on the planet, but their consciousness will remain on the same level. So there is very much a ceiling as to what can be achieved through sin. Well, if you look at the wages of virtue, the person will become more and more virtuous and at a certain point they will fit less and less on a planet which is full of sinful people and they will evolve and they will no longer 
have to take incarnations in physical form, they can take incarnations into higher worlds and continue closer and closer and potentially even reach enlightenment or become a deity themselves. So on the short term, yes, sin has benefits. On the long term, you're going to hit the ceiling. And it is a very, very difficult switch if you've gone very far on the path of sin to let go of all those patterns you've built, all those habits you've built over those many incarnations and to shift to a different pattern where you're not serving yourself but the higher power. And opinions are divided whether we need higher powers ultimately to reach higher levels of consciousness. And in my personal opinion I believe that it is best to work together with our brothers and spirits in the spirit world and with saints, uh, ascended masters, enlightened beings, gods and goddesses because they want to help us, they want us to join them in these higher worlds. And to me it is foolishness to be so arrogant as not to accept their help. This doesn't mean it is impossible for a lone person, a sinful person, to also rise to these higher levels. But I would not recommend it. And I think there is wisdom in the religions which warn against sin and encourage virtue.